Hi everybody! Today is the second episode of the Member Show Art for Art's Sake series. Today we are going to be talking to some of the artists about their inspirations, so please stay tuned to hear some awesome stories and to hear what inspired not only the artwork submitted in the art show, but just these artists in general to get started in their craft and to do what they do. But first, I would like to explain to you guys, if you haven't already, how to check out our member show on our website. So for starters, you just go to our website, which is slcartscouncil.org slash 2020 member show. That should bring you directly to the member show page. Or you could just go directly to the homepage and click under exhibits and the member show will be listed there. And you can go check out the awesome artwork that is for sale and we also have a people's choice award that you can vote for at the bottom once you have viewed all of the pieces submitted in the show and while on our website you may have noticed that we have started a covid relief fund so if you know anyone or if you are interested um, or if you know any businesses that are more than willing to donate um, or to support us in any way please share that with them. Um, we have posted it on our Facebook page as well, and any amount is appreciated by us. Um, we are so grateful for anything that anyone can give. So without further ado, here is episode two of the member show, Art for Art's Sake. Namaste, everyone. So namaste is a socially distanced uh, handshake in India. <laughs> As a young girl, I was really fascinated with the, these designs and I would help my mother and even my grandmother uh, during festivals and ceremonies. And my great grandmother was easily one of the best artists I have seen with her rango Rangoli designs. Her designs were so good and very intricate that people, passers-by who were walking in front of her house every morning when she used to draw these designs, I have seen them literally stop for about 10 minutes and you know, see her draw those designs. I'm sure it would make their day. And that was what uh, initially inspired me uh, to get into art. Uh, that is when I started thinking I should do this uh, when I grow up. Uh, I went through uh, school and then uh, university, completed my master's in uh, biotechnology. After that, I started uh, thinking back on uh, how it was when I would see my grandmother. I knew there was a little bit of art in me. Uh, so I started drawing designs and that's how I started about um, approximately about eight years ago. Serendipity Creations. It's a jewelry company that I started around 2006, and it's all handcrafted by myself. What inspires me is I never know. I can see a picture uh, of something in a, in a catalog or somebody's wearing a piece of jewelry. Also, I get a lot of requests, more and more as more customers buy my pieces. I love creating. I love designing. I love to sit in my studio and just look down and and do my work nothing else is in my mind when i'm doing that customers also influence me a lot well more than 50 percent of my inventory is inventory that i keep making uh, once it sells i make another piece once it sells i make another piece and it's because that's what customers like and that's what customers want and the other part of my inventory is designing pieces with uh, cabochons and making my own sterling designs around the cabochon. They would be one of a kind. They're not something that I would replicate. One thing that inspires me a lot is the enthusiasm I get from my customers. There's, there's nothing more exciting than to be at an art festival and have a customer come by who's wearing a piece that she might have purchased from me. I had one lady come to a show that she probably purchased something 10 years ago from me and she had it on and that that's enough to keep you keep you going and and know that what you're making is is worth it. Everything inspires me and influences me relative to my art. I'm a very visual person so 
they see things uh, and they strike an interest in me. I take a lot of photography to help me use as a model when I do my art. Part of my art is things I find in nature, particularly driftwood that has interesting shapes. I'm inspired by color, inspired by sound, uh, by music. I've always been very interested in music and art, and I think that they're really a critical part of my existence. They make me very happy. The inspiration comes from all kinds of things. I, I started up with my art as a teenager and then ended up getting busy with my career and just kind of letting things go. I was like 25, 30 years not actually working on my fine art, even though I was applying my art skills to designing houses or gardens or working on houses and gardens. I just didn't have the time and the energy for the fine arts because I was so busy working. Three years ago, I was walking downtown at, near my home in, uh, in Melbourne, Florida, and I went down an alley that I didn't know existed, and it, it had art galleries in it, which was really cool. So I went into the studio of one of the art galleries, and there was one of the artists working there. We talked, and she was working on her stuff, and she said, well, you know, we have art night on Thursday nights. So you're welcome to come. So I said, yeah, that's a good idea. I think I'll do that. And a couple of months later, a, a neighbor of mine and I finally decided to go. And that just lit the spark. And I just like reconnected with my fine art. Um, I really hadn't finished a piece of fine art since the mid 80s. And then since then, I've been really busy doing all kinds of things. I'm doing watercolors, acrylics, some pencil, some color pencil. I'm doing the 3D art. And every place I look, I find something that excites me. So I have a backlog of ideas. And sometimes it takes a little bit to push me. But once I get, get pushed and get the thought, then I can work on it. And in the meantime, I have other ideas that are percolating. So there's a whole lot out there that, that just excites me. Hello, Brenda Maxson here. I like the calmness that comes with painting scenery uh, paintings. I like uh, walking out in nature and uh, taking pictures of all sorts of scenery, trees, mountains, things like that. And I really like the seascapes. I could sit and listen to the ocean waves. That to me is very delightful, very peaceful. Colors inspire me, other artists inspire me. Mainly the different techniques that they use, I like to, to look at and employ those in dance and music and drama. I like taking my paintings and putting it to an improvisational piece, for example. To be honest, what inspires me the most is my own personal deep and profound uh, emotional and physical pain. The work that I create, it's an epitaph to my soul, if you will, a transformative experience, very much so. My faith in intertwining light in the darkness in each of my paintings is what really excites me, is what you can do in the darkness to see through that and hope. Nature excites me. Things that we don't think about, like a dew drop on a leaf or a sunset, for example, they inspire the beautiful kaleidoscope of colors that come through my painting and my work. Music inspires a lot of what I do. Many of the titles of my art are inspired by the music I listen to. I hear the stories being told through the music and I'm transcending that onto my canvas or whatever I purpose to do with precision of the emotions of my painting because to me music carries so much emotion and feeling and storytelling and that's that's what art's about to me. Because it is so diverse and there are so many things to it and it's so beautiful. I really think that especially these traditional forms and they haven't, you know, garnered the kind of attention they actually need. As a result, most of these, I see that most of these traditional forms of paintings are actually dying even back home in India. There are very few artists who actually do this. But these two pieces that you see here, the Lakshmi and the Ganesha have um, each took me about uh, a month and a month and a half. Uh, it's because of the embossing. 
it takes a really long time the embossing and the inlay work takes a really long time i don't think people have the patience to do it right now so that's one of the reasons i want to spread the word of indian art my designs and my art like this is a small attempt on my part to make people see what i have seen and experienced and the memories that i have these memories uh, have shaped me and my art i hope anybody who gets to view and enjoy my paintings get to experience the joy that i get doing this and also to you know experience the joy of indian culture through my designs that's easy anybody anybody who has an interest if it's given to me freely i want to give it away freely and one example i have is it was my first time i did the french festival in cape vincent i bet it was 8 years ago and a young girl and i mean young 12 maybe came by with her mom and she very shyly pointed to a few of my pieces and asked you know how i did that and i could tell she didn't really want to ask the question because that's tough you know when you walk up to a booth you don't really want to quiz the artist so i explained to her a few things and i told her where i bought some of my pieces my supplies and the next year she came by my booth again and she brought me some of her pieces that she'd made over the over the winter she asked for constructive criticism so i gave them to her and the next year she came back and showed me the pieces that she'd worked on through that that winter and she'd done a lot better and uh, her enthusiasm was building and so the next summer i asked her if she'd work with me so she came by my booth and she worked all saturday with me and she learned a lot and she was really very very good the next year uh i asked her to make some pieces for me and so all winter long she made these pieces and brought them to me the next summer and i sold some of them i gave her money for them because i figured that was how she was going to learn the uh the other ways i've inspired people is i met a a girlfriend about 6 years ago after a show and she was nervous about doing festival and such as said it's nothing you know i'll i'll help you so she and i got together i helped her buy her tent up to up and go from there and she did it for about 5 years and was was very successful and then other other people I've helped other vendors I've helped last 2 years I have taught a few uh, students in silversmithing and that's been fun that's been fun to see their interest in and in how all the fabrication works Florida is where the opportunity was for me to be able to be taught. It's not that I could not find a teacher up here in in New York state. I never had the opportunity. So when I got to Florida right in New Smyrna Beach where I am in the winter, there was a lady who opened a, a store and a studio and I asked her if I could work with her in exchange for lessons. That's where I first began at silversmithing. Before that I did beading work. I never never th- thought I could do the silversmithing. I guess I didn't have the uh, confidence to to work a torch and all that stuff and now it's nothing. So uh I gladly teach teach that to to students now. And as I said before, I had people freely and gladly help me when I began in every aspect of my business. So I really do feel that unless exactly threatens a certain area of my business I'm more than willing to help. My very first art festival was the Remington Art Festival in Canton, probably 14 years ago. I remember asking the the executive director then, if, "Do you think my stuff is good enough to sell at an at an art festival?" Uh, that's how I began, and she said, "Yeah, I do." And it was St. Lawrence University's Parents Weekend, so that even made it better as far as more people around. and it was very successful and uh i so that's what got me going the ne- general sense i i just wish to connect with and inspire anyone who has an interest in the kind of art that i do you know anyone who wants to experience what i do i you know it's hard to say i mean i i would just hope that if someone turns and looks at a piece of art and sees something or feels something in it then it would connect with them and then they might want 
to look at the rest of my art. Primarily, I think, anybody who tends to think that they can't. I wish to inspire the whole world, to be honest, to look deeper through surface issues, uh, such as pain and beauty and, and even mental illness. And I want it to penetrate their souls. I want them to think about it in a different way, in a non-stigmatic way, where there's beauty in pain and there's beauty in the process of getting to hope. And it's a transformative experience I like to share on my canvases. My art allows others to take what's given and influences them in the way that they see things. In my work, I hide so many different layers and symbols. And for example, many of my paintings, I will incorporate a butterfly, which means transformation and freedom. And I'll hide words. Some people are fun at gallery shows where they just walk up to my painting and they're like this close and they're like, wow, you know, there's so many different things in that and in words and symbols. I like to make the viewer go to the work I just des desire to inspire others to create from their deepest parts of them and the emotions that they're afraid to share and not be afraid to expose their kaleidoscopes of color themselves. The tips I would give uh, is just start doing it. I really think everybody is talented. Everybody has a talent. Some people, unfortunately, think they can't do it, but everybody has the talent, believe me. So if you just sit and start doing it, uh, you will yourself start finding inspiration in other forms of art, not, not just from Indian art, but men, there are many other types of art and uh, you can find inspiration from that too, or, or even from nature. So. I think you should just sit and start doing it. Yeah, my mantra is uh, don't let fear stop you. That's, uh, that's the number one thing. And I'll tell you, it's still my mantra because there are times when I sit down at this bench and I look at a piece and I go, mm, I don't know if I can really do that. Uh, my teacher in Florida says we have to be fearless and smart, but fearless. And so that's what that's what keeps me going, and that's what I tell that's what I tell a lot of people. If you design something, and I know this from experience, I may spend hours designing something. It may not come out exactly the way I want it, but as long as it's okay, as long as there aren't any flaws in it or any problems with it structurally, I'll put it out to sell because somebody is going to like it. Who am I to say that something I made really won't appeal to somebody? And also, don't be too critical of your work. That was something also that my teacher tells me. First thing I used to do, not anymore, the first thing I used to do is I'd say, oh, but this is kind of, and she'd go, you know, but basically don't point out your own mistakes. In doing that, I've learned that I may make a mistake from what my, my mind had, what my vision was, but it may be okay. And so she has taught me to make that a design element. And like I said, as long as the, the piece itself is not compromised, then who's to say that it's not a good piece? I would just say for my primary advice would be don't be shy and don't be afraid to just jump in. I know one of the things that always inhibited me when I was first starting was you know, I thought everything I did had to be perfect and everything I did had to be a masterpiece. And that really limits your ability to create and to make interesting art. Just play with the art, play with the materials, see what they are, see what they do. I mean, some of my early art and some of my most complex art, I just did with magic markers, like a, you know, a set of 50 that you get for $5. I've done some really cool things with that. I would say, if you have an interest in art, pick something fairly simple to use, markers, crayons, watercolor, and then to 
a simple subject and try to paint it and, and see how you do with it or draw it and go from there. I, when I first met the, the woman at the art studio in, in Melbourne, I was really reluctant because I was shy about my art. I didn't think my art was as good as theirs. I mean, a lot of those people have gone to art school, have worked in commercial art, have done, you know, formal art, been paid to do their art for years. And I'm just a self-taught artist who, who thinks it's fun and like the outcome and kind of learned how to do it. So it took me a while to get over my shyness. And I realized, you know what? My art has merit and people will like my art. Not everybody will, but some people will. And it, it really gave me the confidence, for, you know, for people to see and be comfortable with it. So I'd say jump in. If you, if you think you're interested in art, give it a shot. I was inspired once by many years ago when I was in my 20s by Bob Ross. And he said, and this is the advice I would give to anybody, that anybody can paint. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be precisely representational of nature. And the tree doesn't have to look precisely like a tree. And you get better the, the more you paint. So that's what, that would be my encouragement is for other people to just paint. Well, I do many media from glass bead jewelry to chalk pastels and um, mosaics and digital work. So if I were to pick one, I guess um, digital art, take some magazines, cut them up, take some pictures, say you want some blue or green, take the things that are those colors, cut them up and redistribute them on a canvas. Just play with them. Just start taking glue and glue them down and and watch, watch it evolve. But when you get comfortable with that, then go find some computer program. Uh, there's Adobe, there's Inkscape. Take those programs and let them help you create those layers that you put on your canvas. Use what inspires you to create for art's sake. Not, not I'm gonna be a Picasso, although you probably will find you are. You'll find that inner artist within you when you stop thinking about what art can be and just do it as a fluidity of your emotions and feeling. I hope that you cut up magazines and try these things for yourself and have fun with it.